Well, good morning, SCF Kids. I'm Jenna. And I'm Kyla, and we are back for another episode of SCF Kids Online. Last week, the people of Judah finally made it home after 70 years in captivity, only to find that the temple that they used to worship God in was destroyed. So today, we're gonna look at what happened when some of the people decided they were gonna rebuild the temple. Hold on tight though, because it wasn't as easy as you might think. Check this out. Hey, uh, what you building? I am building a model house for school project. Hmm, well, that's kind of cool. Mind if I watch? No, not at all. I wouldn't mind some company. Uh, hate to tell you this, but you're building it all wrong. Like if it was me, I would not be doing it like that. Uh, yeah. How do you expect that to hold up anything? It's a disaster. Uh, hey, that was not very nice. Why would you do that? Well, I didn't think you were doing a very good job. So I thought maybe you should start again. Uh, okay. Well, please don't break it this time. Really? You're gonna build it the same way you did the last time? Have you learned nothing?
look at that thing. It's just like a pile of mush. This is so discouraging. I can't even get it right. And you're being so mean. I give up. After living in Babylon for 70 years, God's people were home. A group had returned to Jerusalem to rebuild God's temple. They had started the work, but their neighbors didn't want them to rebuild the temple, so they stopped building. The people made excuses. Maybe it isn't the right time to rebuild the temple, they said. They thought that because the task was difficult, maybe God didn't want them to do it. God sent the prophets Haggai and Zechariah to encourage the people. So the leaders, Zerubbabel and Joshua, started working on the temple again. At this time, Darius, the king of Persia, ruled over the land of Judah. The king was in charge of so much land, he put governors in charge of some of the land. A governor named Tatanai noticed God's people had started to rebuild the temple again. Tatanai talked to Zerubbabel and the others working on the temple. Do you have permission to rebuild this temple? Tatanai asked. The workers said, we do. Tatanai sent a worker to King Darius. This is what Tatanai's letter to King Darius said. To Darius the king, this letter is to tell you that the people of Judah are building the temple of the great God. They said King Cyrus gave them permission to rebuild the temple. Please search the royal records to see if this is true. King Darius's officials searched the royal record for Cyrus's order. Huh? They found it, a scroll with a record from King Cyrus. This is what was written <sighs> on the scroll. Let God's temple be rebuilt. It will be a place to offer sacrifices. Let its foundation be rebuilt. King Cyrus had also ordered for the cost of building the temple to be paid for out of the royal treasury. So King Darius sent a letter back to Tatanai. He gave this order. Stay away from the workers in Jerusalem. Don't bother them or try to stop them. Give them whatever they need. Tatanai and the other officials obeyed King Darius' order. The Jewish leader kept building, and they finally finished the temple of God. The people celebrated and made offerings to God. They chose priests and assistants to serve in the temple. Then God's people celebrated the Passover. God's people were so happy. Now, the temple of God was finally complete. God's people rebuilt the temple so they would have a place to worship God. Years later, God sent his son, Jesus, to be with his people. Now God dwells not in the temple, but directly with his people. Jesus provided something better than the temple. He gives us himself. Jen was pretty discouraging to Kylie. She made it so hard for her to finish her school project that she just ended up giving up. Kind of like the people of Judah in our story. They were so discouraged by the enemies surrounding them that they stopped building the temple, not just for a day or two, for 16 years. That was until the prophet Haggai showed up and he encouraged them to continue the work that they had started before to build the temple to glorify God. Have you ever felt like giving up on something because it was just way too hard? Well, sometimes we all need a little encouragement. We can be comfort with the truth that even when things are difficult, God is still with us. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Addison from Laurel, Mississippi asks, If God is everywhere, why do we go to church? 
can't we just worship him on our own? Yes, God is everywhere. We know this doctrine, the big fancy word, is called God's omnipresence. It means that God, because he has no body, he is spirit, he is everywhere. And so there's nowhere we can go where God is not, which is a great comfort, but also is something that is kind of sobering because when we are tempted to sin, we have to remember nobody else might be there to see us, but God is always there. He's aware. So for me, God's omnipresence is an encouragement, uh, but also it's a way that helps me from sinning against Him. But your question was really about worship. If, if God is everywhere, we can worship Him anywhere. Why gather as a church? It's a good question. And, and let me just say, yes, we can worship God anywhere, and we should. Uh, the Bible says that our entire lives should be an act of worship. So whatever we are doing, we should be doing for His glory as worship to Him. Why gather then? Well, here's the thing. Because our salvation is not just about us. It's not just about our relationship with God like it's one-to-one -one and other people don't matter. The Bible is clear. Yes, our salvation is individual, that God saved us individually. There's nobody else that had anything to do with that. Nobody else could help save us. It's just between us and God. But we're saved not to isolation, just us and God. We're saved to be part of a community, gospel community called the church. And so we gather for that reason because we are a people together. We encourage one another. We spur each other to worship more beautifully together. We hold each other accountable. It's good for us to gather together as the body of Christ, understanding that we're not walking through this life alone. God has given us this family called the church. That's really why we gather. We gather for that reason as we worship and celebrate what God has done for us individually, but also for us as a people called the church. So question back for you. How has the church helped your understanding of and love for Jesus? All right, kids, it's memory verse time. So Kyla and I thought we would do a little game with some pasta, just for fun. So we're gonna have a piece of spaghetti that we are gonna put in our mouth. We're gonna try and scoop up some penne pasta with our mouth, not with our hands. So if you think you wanna be on team Kyla, give a shout. If you wanna be on team Jenna, let me hear you. Okay, so you gotta pick your team, and after one minute is up, we're gonna see which team has the most pasta on their pasta. And then the opposite team will have to take that many words out of the verse and say it together, okay? So if team Kyla wins, then team Jenna will have to say the verse with that many words missing. Make sense? All right, here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. three. I couldn't even get one. <laughs> I got three. Mm. Cheer us on, kids. Mm. <laughs> it's gonna be almost over. I'm gonna run out of room. I did run out of room. Mm -mm. Oh no. Mm. How much time is that left over there? Okay. Wow. Uh, so, how many did you get? I think you beat me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it was a tie. <gasps> All right. Well, I guess everybody gets to say the verse with six words missing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three. 
I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, new rule. Seeing as we mastered one, as soon as you fill one up, you can set it down and you can start on another one. All right. You ready? Yeah. You got one minute set on the timer? I will. Okay. I'm going to get a Oh, we're going to redo this? I'm actually like gluten free and my tongue is burning right now. Is your tongue burning? No. Okay. Maybe I'm just allergic to the pasta. I don't know. It's actually <laughs> hurting my mouth. Not. But I will do this for you, kids. I do this for you. All right. Okay? Let's get this done. Ready? Set. Go. Uh oh. Mm mm. This is hard. I'm my faster to move backwards. I was so close to filling that one up. Me too. Six. I got six again. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, team Kyla is the winner for that round. So if you were on Team Jenna, you're reading it with me. And we also have the six words from last time and the seven from this time. So it's going to be difficult. Here we go. Team Jenna, read it with me. One, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. You got one more round in you? I guess so. This time, here's my challenge for you. If you have spaghetti noodles at home and you have penne pasta, 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 you've got penne pasta, I want you to pause the video, go to your kitchen, find your supplies. I want you to do it with us. If you beat both Kyla and I, then, well, we won't know that you beat us, but you get a free pass on having to read the verse. How about that? Pretty good, eh? Okay. So, Ready. let's give it one last try. Ready? Oh, we're starting with that. Oh. Set, go. Harder than it looks, kids. One, oh. two, three, four, five, six. I got six every time. Oh. <laughs> what did I you got get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Team Kyla wins again. You want to know what my theory is, though? My theory is that I'm taller than you, so yeah. you're like at the level of the pasta, mm -hmm. and I'm like leaning down, so they just keep falling off. Yeah, yeah that's my true. theory. Yeah. Anyways, true. if you were on Team Jenna, or if you won at home, you don't get to read the verse this time. But if you're a team Jenna, read it with me one last time on the count of three. One, two, three. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. 
Jeremiah 29, 11. Well, that was a lot of fun, Kyla. It was. And uh, you know what? You probably just won because you're actually just better at it than I am. So mm. congratulations. Thank you, you are the winner. Team Kyla, if you were on Team Kyla, you are we the winner good. today. But what I want you to do now is I want you to go find your Bible and meet us back here. Do a little dance and we'll open it up to see what God's word has for us today. Okay, you got your dance moves out, you got your Bible, and now I want you to open it up to Romans 8, 28, and Kyla's going to read it for us in just a second, but if you need a few minutes to find that, you can pause the video, open it up, and then we'll read it together. All right, so the verse says... We know that in all things God works for good with those who love him, those whom he has called according to his purpose. I'm sure God's plan doesn't always make sense to God's people, but God did everything for his glory and our good. The Lord is always in control. This song we are going to sing talks about giving all the glory to God for all he has done. So stand up and let's sing together.
What do you say, Kyla? You want to destroy a pinata today? Yes. <laughs> I thought you would. All right, kids. I'm going to give Kyla the job of destroying our fish pinata to see what's inside. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Go for it. She's given up already. But you know what, Kyla? This pinata is kind of like our life. Sometimes things are difficult. We get beat up on the outside. Sometimes people say things that hurt our feelings. Or we get bruised and hurt. But we don't get discouraged because we know what's on the inside, right? You guys know what's on the inside of a pinata. Yeah, toys and candy. It's awesome. You gotta be encouraged and give it another try because what's inside is so amazing. Are you ready for another try? I just okay. rip it. I, I know you can do it. All you need is a little encouragement. Ready. Just don't hit me. Ready? Ready. Sucker is my favorite. Oh, another sucker. Do you guys want to share the fun? Oh, I so wish I could give this to you right now. But just like Kyla needed a little bit of encouragement to rip open this pinata, the people of Judah needed a little bit of encouragement in our story today. And that came from the prophet Haggai, if you remember correctly. They were so discouraged that they actually stopped building the temple for 16 years years. Their enemies had discouraged them, but when Haggai showed up, he encouraged them to continue building the temple so that they could worship God in this place again. Such a great story, and thank you, Kyla, for all of these wonderful <laughs> treats. We're going to have to go and have a little party. party here, but before we do that, we're going to close in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, you work all things together for our good and your glory. Help us to see your glory in our broken world. Help us to believe that whatever the circumstances, you are good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.